Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute and answer your questions live on YouTube. If you want to help us out, be sure to subscribe to our channel and add us to your podcast feed over on iTunes or Google Play. And if you want to represent TFC, head over to our merch store for t-shirts, stickers, mugs, and posters. You can go to designbyhumans.com slash shop slash the flute channel. Finally, if you're looking into buying a new flute, be sure to check out the Flute Center of New York at flutesforsale.com. With our code TFC at checkout, you'll be able to try up three flutes or piccolos, and whichever instrument you choose, you get an extended 18th month warranty on it. So be sure at checkout to put in the special code TFC at flutesforsale.com. Now on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Amy. A couple of little problems today, but that's okay. Uh, you doing all right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes good. Okay, yeah. Stress with the sound. Yeah, stress with the sound a little bit. I think there probably still is a little bit, but we'll see. Yeah, people will tell us. People will tell us in the chat. Just let us know in the chat. And uh, yeah, you just had a, a couple online uh, I had an online lesson. lesson just before. Yeah. yeah. How do you like doing those? It's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like it. What's uh, yeah. what's different than, well, you, you know? Well, you can touch the person. <laughs> You can't touch you can't the person. Touch, yeah, you know, you can't <laughs> move their flute. Uh-huh. But you know, really, it's it's not. Except for that, you know, you can see and you can hear. You can't play together at the same time, but I can still give an example. I can still do a, and there's not a big delay, uh-huh. so I can play and we can do um. Imitation, you know, sometimes I teach by imitation, so I play, you play, I play, you play, you know, mm-hmm. that works totally fine. I can give examples, I can, yeah, so yeah, if you, I don't mm-hmm. see, I just tell the person to uh, move a bit the camera or show me uh, another angle or something, but usually I, uh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, there's a delay in the sound as usual, a delay in the sound. Ah, well, we'll have to deal with it because I have to go all the way to the computer to do it. It was a bunch of, uh, but maybe it's not. Maybe, uh, oh, people say it does sound good too. Okay. Uh, and some people say the sound is not in sync, but we'll try our best because, uh, I think the internet's really weird and I don't know what's going on, but yeah, so people are Columbia, all these types of places. And, um, so yeah, you were just talking about how you were doing, you have online lessons now. That's pretty sweet. And it's just it's a new thing for you, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, pretty new. Just, yeah, a couple of months. I've been doing it for a couple of months. That's pretty cool. And you also have a studio here, too, as well, which is yeah, great, like, inside at home, which is nice. I've been teaching for a long time before that. But, mm-hmm. uh, like, yeah, a lot of mm-hmm. years and years. But the Skype thing, it's, uh, it's more recent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, let us know in the chat, and we'll definitely uh, answer some of those questions for you. If you have any questions about the flute, uh, we have some questions here from the from pre from this past two weeks, and we're gonna get through some of them. Also, a s- cool thing that happened this week or two weeks ago, just after we finished the podcast last time, two weeks ago, we found out that Terry Crews, who's a very famous yeah. actor, and, we- and who's also a flutist. If you've ever seen him in Brooklyn Nine Nine or anything like that, I checked our subscription list, and he's our top subscriber. He's the subscriber that has the most subscribers, and he was on top of the list. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. So, I reached out to him on Instagram and stuff, and maybe we'll see what. Uh, maybe he'll make a comment one day. Who knows? There's the the, <laughs> we the were title. Very happy. Yeah. We love what he does. Yeah, we love what he does, and he's very creative. And, and sometimes so. we make jokes because I, yeah, I intermittent fast. Yeah, you intermittent can, fast. Yeah. But I don't get the same results. No, so no. That's the, no. Joke. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah. So, what? Uh, oh, the good question was: Do you use alternate fingerings, and why do you use them, and which ones do you use? Yeah, I use some sometimes, like um, can be for um, um, it can be for intonation purposes. Mm-hmm. It can be for technique purposes like to go faster sometimes i'll use um harmonic fingerings uh-huh. let's say you have to go uh, g f sharp e d instead of going uh-huh. and right, you know you might uh, like it went okay but if you go you can go way faster uh-huh. so that 
sometimes I'll use um, well now my C sharps are pretty in tune you know but they're usually high so I used to put three fingers of the left hand of the right hand you know to bring it down mm -hmm. a little bit. usually if you add fingers you lower the, the note usually yeah yeah sometimes I remove my pinky on the E to help with the cracking sometimes uh, if I want to play a high F sharp soft I'll use the middle finger instead of the ring finger of the right hand little things like that G sharp if I want to lower it the high third octave G sharp I'll add two fingers here the ring finger and the mm, third finger okay finger. like what do you use like you use a lot of uh, alternate fingerings uh, yeah most of the time most of the time I use some alternate fingerings um I guess not, I, most, I, of I, not most of the time, but most my but my time, mind, my but my way of thought about it is that I, I just I try to figure out uh, whatever works I use it at that one moment. So yeah, like, it's about the result. It's yeah, not, it's no always one... about the result. So yeah. you have that basic foundation of all the keys, but then you realize you can do little adjustments here and there, and then there's certain combinations on the flute that also make the same note again that you would never think of and stuff like that. So. Because it's so interesting. It, it's a big thing. We had a discussion about it, the, about that this week. You know, some people and a lot of some teachers, I would say, and then when you learn that way, maybe you're more you tend to be that way. Mm -hmm. They use their eyes more than their ears when it comes to music. So they look at you and say, mm -hmm. "Oh, you didn't use the right fingering," or "Oh, you didn't do this," or. Sure. But if the result is good, that's what counts. Because the music there, it's it's a blueprint to the result. Mm. You know, it's uh -huh. not, it's not, the composer writes it there for you to make what the most beautiful music with it. The composer doesn't care if you use this fingering or that fingering. Right. That's a flutist uh -huh. thing, like a uh, obsession. Obsession, yeah. You know? Uh -huh. But, yeah. I think it's for different, a lot of different things. Like, personally, my finger technique is a bit high. You know? Ah, uh, Yes. Some people could fingers, look at yeah. it and be like, it's way too high. Well, maybe for most people it's too high, but I can play pretty fast with my technique. But also I have, I have, um, my ligaments are too, uh, elastic. Like I have, um, how do you call that? Hyperlax ligaments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe, you know, I don't have the same range of motion. I don't have the same. We're all different. Exactly. So if it works for me, why would I change anything? It works. Mm -hmm. I think I said that before. Rampal used to put his pinky of the left hand under the, the G sharp key. Exactly. I would right. never do that. I would never advise anyone to do that. But if I had a student with Rampal's technique that came to me, I would not ask him to change it either. Mm -hmm. You know, because... It didn't bother him. It didn't make him make any mistake. It's not a problem you should fix because it's not a problem. It's just a different way of doing things mm -hmm. that worked for him. For him, like yeah. Some people play on the side. Some people... Mm. It's a whole... Listen. And if... You know, if someone has pain mm -hmm. or different things like that, you right. fix it. But if there's no problem and it sounds good... Yeah, don't, you know, uh, don't fix it. It's just a way of thinking for mm. fingerings, for ambusher technique whatever mm. you know mm. so that was my yeah there we go so hopefully that answers that question uh whoa. oh what well i don't know i know what it is now but what used to be or still is maybe your daily practice routine i know like we practice less now than because we do stuff but uh, like when you were up and coming i assume that's where it was coming from from yeah, somebody who's probably was, a teenager um... In the learning phase, I learning, guess, yeah. or mastering phase, mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, practice, well, for a while I practiced three hours a day. I think the most efficient part where I built my technique a lot, practiced three hours a day. And I would do about 30 minutes of sound and then 30 minutes of, 30 to 45 minutes of uh, technique, like scales mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm different finger things mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, then another 30 minutes on on um, a study I would learn one big study a week and then um, I would learn 
an excerpt, an orchestral excerpt. I would practice that 15 minutes a day approximately, and then the, left, the rest of the time was gone for my repertoire. So that was pretty much how I practiced. I was, yeah. But if you have less time, you just put less time on each, each item. Mm -hmm. But I think practicing each is a good way. I agree. That's pretty much what I... To make everything go up, you know, make everything improve at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would be. I would say the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. And what I like about that is that, let's say you, you work on your sound first. So mm -hmm. you think of the sound. You only think of that. Then when the technique comes in, when you start doing your scales, you blow the same way. You keep the same sound quality, but you add this. Mm-hmm. And then you add on, you know, and then you add also the the articulations and all those things and you keep the same sound quality mm -hmm. and then you add playing a piece but keeping that same you know mm -hmm. so it's a good way to just stay focused on the important on things mm. hopefully that answers your question a little bit it's a little bit less i, I like that that was a good answer yeah it's really great because like most people they kind of just say like this 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 but it's really uh really quick oh, maybe quick. it was not clear enough you oh think? no it was totally Okay. Um, Matthew, Mathis says, I hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, this is coming from a non-flute player. They really enjoyed the dynamics in that different flute, in the different price flute video that we made. Uh, how do you do this? Is it just a matter of blowing less air in the flute? When you know, do, yeah, do, yeah. do, 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 That's do, so do, 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 that it was all about the eyebrows, and I thought mm -hmm. it was so funny. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was doing that. Yeah, the, the eyebrows, eyebrows yeah. I never noticed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all about the eyebrows. Yeah. Um, Dynamic of eyebrows. <laughs> Dynamics, just use eyebrows. But, yeah, no, um, mm -hmm. you blow less air, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But then you have to compensate in many ways to keep the same intonation right so you don't go down when so the intonation doesn't go down when you play soft mm. you have to compensate hence the eyebrows i think mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so yes it's a matter of how much air but then you have to work on the air speed and the opening of the mouth because you 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 close your mm -hmm. the hole okay. becomes smaller mm -hmm. yeah and then you put, you know, it's a whole system uh -huh. that has to work, yeah, work so everything stays in sync. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So hopefully that answers your question. Nice, cool question. That's one of our favorite videos. If you haven't seen that yet, mostly every, probably yeah. everybody on the planet seen it. That's a flutist <laughs> or anybody really. It's a lot of, a lot of, we've met a lot of people. Oh, there's still uh, a lot of six people thousand, yeah. on the planet that can see Yeah, it. there's still a lot of people that can see it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Um, another question was, what are the pros and cons, or how do you feel are the pros and cons of a B foot to a C foot? Like, what is the, what are the benefit, what are the benefit of programs when you think about it? Because I know I started on a C foot. I, I think started, you started on a C yeah. foot. We, I think every flute is almost started on a C foot, uh, flute. And, uh, for me, uh, it just, uh, adds an extra note so that you can play some pieces that have been written. There's about, you know, maybe a couple hundred pieces that have that. But I know a lot of flutes that play with a C and then play with an extension tube or play with it or have another B foot, a spare B foot, because they like, they think it projects more or maybe they think, um, it vibrates brighter. There's so many different yeah. feelings that some people, people get. Have three different foot. The yeah, three. So there's feet. An, yeah feet. <laughs> I guess yeah. Yeah, because so, there's uh, a B I flat as well. Mozart, there's like Mozart and before him, there it, it stops at the D. There's no C. Yeah, there's, there's no, no C. C. Yeah. So they say, why have the extra mm -hmm. length if I don't need it and mm -hmm. it kind of makes my sound yeah. a bit darker or whatever. Yeah. Personally, I don't have the luxury mm -hmm. of three B, of three three uh, foot uh, joints. Foot joints. Yeah. So I just have the B foot, but. Those are the pros and cons, I guess. It's yeah. just, it gives you more notes, but then for the acoustics, it's not as easy, I guess. Uh huh. Yeah, pretty much. I know like traversos and a lot of those flutes used to come with several of them because it wasn't that very expensive to make those types, but because <laughs> they were made uh -huh. out of wood, you know. Now I'm not saying it was made cheap, but made well. So but there was, uh, so you were able to even interchange the middle part as well, uh -huh. 
which is really amazing. Imagine. But also a, from one city to, to another back then, you had yeah. a different pitch. Tunings, yeah. So if you were a traveling musician, history you lesson, different <laughs> yeah. flutes to be able to play in different cities because in one city was at uh, 415 and the city next door, like the other city was 430 and then they all had different A's. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a... So they didn't have an atomic clock either. You mm-hmm. know? <laughs> Maybe the time was not perfectly in sync everywhere. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Luke says, it's nice to have a low dominant B when playing with guitars who overuse the key of E. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, yeah. If you guys have any questions in the, in the, in the, in, if you're watching live, be sure to ask us in the comments and we'll answer them. Another question was, um, oh, what method would you start with uh, if uh, start with a child who doesn't necessarily have a band program at their school? Yeah, well, we're writing a method right now. Right. And it's almost finished. So how would you go? What would the first lesson be? What would, What is the first page of that book? What would you tell? What would you give to I them? I think we have videos about that, actually. Mm-hmm. There's Three videos, one about making your first sound on yeah. the flute with only the head joints. I think we have to redo them and put them in HD, like yeah, because they were our H- first. Ones. They were our first we'll videos, redo yeah. Where we do them for sure. So yeah, you start by just taking the head joint and put it, putting your hand. Well, I'll do, I'll show it right. Uh huh. Yep. You put your hand at the end. Uh huh. Put your mouth in your. Right. Like if you're doing it in a bottle, uh-huh. you know, in a uh-huh. beer bottle or any other type of bottles, and then you remove your hand, then it becomes a bit more difficult uh-huh. and more resistance. Right. Airspeed, I guess. Uh-huh. You, know, you need more airspeed. That's the first thing, you know, making a sound, then you learn to assemble it, you learn where to put your fingers, because there are more keys than fingers. Uh-huh. Where to put your fingers, and then uh, a B. And then in the method, the method, method, method in that, the method, uh, yeah. we're writing right now. Uh, I composed a little piece with just a B and some chords for the the teacher, or we'll record the, uh, those so that the, mm-hmm. if you don't have a teacher, exactly. you can still play it with it uh, with the accompaniment. And then I, you know, then mm-hmm. I go on and on. I explain that. If you add a finger, you go one note down. So we learn three notes, and then I add notes each time. Mm. And the method is designed to be able to learn by yourself. And it's uh, you don't need ah. five books. You don't need one book for sound, one book for technique, one book for... Because I try to put everything there. Sight right. reading, rhythm, and uh, sound exercises, technique, right. a little study, some repertoire, and everything's like, you know... Um, Lesson one, and yeah, later there. No, you can work on two. for yeah. They can work on for a week, you know, or yeah, however many or days, or ever whenever you figure it out. Maybe in the right. beginning you might have to work on it for two days, and maybe the the right. more advanced lessons you might have to work on them for two three weeks uh-huh. because they're different level of uh, difficulty. It all depends. Uh-huh. You know? But uh-huh. I think it's going to be a helpful method, and um, no, totally. We're gonna, um, release it soon mm-hmm. yeah we're gonna release it soon just uh doing some designs and going through some edits and we'll be having it out there and then book two and book three yeah because it's already yeah out yeah exactly head, but just have it's to put it on paper yeah that's the long part yeah yeah exactly ideas are not a problem no 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 <laughs> totally um yeah i think that's about it for the questions that we had no, those were notes that we had about uh, taking online lessons and how that is. Um, also about Terry, we were talking about that just before. But also, we've uh, we're slowly going to hopefully do online group lessons that, uh, that we're going to work amazing. through Discord. If you guys don't know what Discord is, be sure to go and check that out. See what it is. Get comfortable with it. If you want to have. Uh, it's a cheaper alternative than having a uh, one-on-one lesson if you can't afford those types of lessons or if you want to learn about how other people learn as well. This is going to be um, having live one-on-one, but people listening in and then 
everybody taking turns having lessons with you and it's significantly more affordable for people and we're going to try to do we're going to do some testing this month with a couple people and then we're going to release it out for people to sign up and it's only going to be about oh, we'll see it's going to be way way cheaper than yeah. a traditional one hour lesson because a traditional one hour lesson is about you know 70 75 dollars you know it's a uh, and then this will be significantly less so that everyone can have a cool experience. And I think it's something that's going to be the future of uh, and that's a cool master class. Because you can also learn from others. Exactly. So... It's meant to be like a communicative thing, not just like a master class or a group lesson, but really a group, group lesson that has people inside that are all contributing together to help each other or to ask questions. And you're just kind of the person who brings everybody together and talks about how to do specific things on the yeah, floor. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, when we do the food festival here in the summer in uh -huh. Montreal, yeah. then you should check it out if you want to do a festival. Yeah, this exactly. Very cool. Yeah, the food festival is three days long this year. Yeah, and we have Alexa still, who's amazing, who uh -huh. comes and gives the afternoon master class. But really, master class, it's an intimidating word for just group class. Very, know? very intimidating word and for I just think, a group class. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's... And um, I think at the festival, we make it, we make people feel comfortable. All right. And I think that yeah. would be the goal. No. It the, the, the same goal. Yeah, with, with the, the Discord. Yeah, with the Discord, totally. Yeah, to with make the, everyone feel comfortable. Absolutely. And what I do in the mornings is that um, while we do a warm-up, we can't do that there because there's going to be a delay and it's going to upset Right. The, but whatever, that doesn't matter. But... Then what I do is I go and ask everyone what's their mm -hmm. goal, what they want to work on. Right. Then we work on it all together. And then if yeah. there's time, people can play their pieces. Exactly. And so I think we're going to try to do something organic like that. Totally. Totally. Instead of being on a timer like 15 minutes per person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see how people feel because we're there to make people happy. So if they want something, we'll yeah. adjust. But yeah. we'll... Try to find an organic way of doing exactly to make it nice for everyone. Yeah, and we'll have a release video about that soon, talking about it. And if you're on our Facebook page, you should go and like it. We talk about it there a little bit, and there's a form there that you can fill out to give us information about how you would like this group lesson to be. And uh, also on our website, uh, thefluechannel.com, we'll have more information too right. later on. Because in the summer, you know, some people are like, oh, I would like to work on my soft high notes mm -hmm. and someone else was like me it's breathing and mm -hmm. so you know and then we yeah we're able to work on those exactly things and everyone has to work on those things <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. exactly so yeah um mike uh michael oh my god uh he wants to know at what pitch do you practice Emily? a440 or a442 <laughs> usually a440 a441. A441. Yeah, that's, that's what goes on around here. <laughs> that's how. But you likes know. to stir the pot this way. <laughs> but then sometimes I have to completely readjust. What a compromise. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, right, I'm a yeah, compromise thought, yeah. person. But yeah, that's part of my personality, I guess. But uh, the festival last summer, it was uh, the pianos where we rented. All right. It was quite incredibly high. sharp. I was like, oh my god! Yeah, four, four, four. Like, Blue, I, think was, uh, I think it was. Goes that high? I think it was four, 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 five. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Was the. Uh, yeah, quite something. Quite something. Yeah. Um, do you feel a difference in the technique when you practice in one pitch and then change? No. No. Me either. No. Uh, hopefully that's what that like means. Sometimes, let's say. I remember mm -hmm. sometimes I, I put my flute and I forget to put it in the right spot, you know? So it's oh, yeah, way totally. Too me too. Way right. too out. And I mm -hmm. play, what is wrong with my sound? But mm -hmm. it's on my, you know, because timbre and pitch in our brain, they're, sometimes we mix them up. Oh, so yeah. So I think my sound is dark, but really it's just too low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, gotcha. Yeah, that's funny, but that's it. That's mm. the only thing it changes. Okay. My perception of the timber changes if, if it's too low. Mm, 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 mm. I see. That's also why some people play so sharp, because it makes it sound more more um, brilliant, more, um, how do you say that? Shiny. You know? Shiny, yeah. If it's higher. So they always push, push higher, higher and higher. higher and higher, yeah. But totally. at one point, it's not 
An A is going to be an A sharp. You yeah, know? that's like, it. Then why? Then why? Huh? That's so funny. It's <laughs> interesting know. to think that way. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. How high can you go before it's uh, A sharp? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that answered his question. Um, I guess, basically, uh, I think we still have... Um, you have a concert coming up. Yes. That you're going to be playing Chaminade. Yeah. And um, the, might play Chopin, but we don't know yet. You might play Chopin. It's a piano concert. Yeah, piano concert. My yeah. piano teacher for five years when I was a teenager, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. And she was also my accompanist. Mm -hmm. and competitions and all those things. And she's doing a concert for... Uh, like a benefit 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 concert to raise money for her choir, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so she doesn't have that much time mm -hmm. to include. So we're gonna right. figure out how how much we can play together in that for, concert. Yeah, for people who don't know what the shamanad uh, sounds like, could you play just a tiny second of it? Yeah, we also have a learn shamanad. We also do. We have a two part two part learning shamanad. <laughs> And so on and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll hopefully have some type of like little recording of it from your concert there. And, oh, that'd uh, be nice. And we have uh, last week, uh, this past week, we released a lot of videos, um, actually more than what we usually do, which is really awesome. And we're going to try to do that as well. We're going to try to do Monday, Wednesday still, and then, uh, and then just practicing or something like that on the weekends. But we're going to scatter a couple little videos here and there this week. We got another flute review from the Flute Center of New York. We also have um, a couple of other videos about specific things. We yeah. have one uh, that's a breathing exercise with a little ball that goes... Right, I'm very down. happy about that. Yeah, co about cardiac coherence, which is really something that I think every one of you flutists that are watching this today or whenever you're going to be watching this, you should really look at that video and try it out uh, because it really, really helps putting you at ease Oh, yeah. When you're either about to do a concert, or if you're at home and you want to, and you're getting it's, nervous, it's any of those types of things. For musicians. No, but it's we for everyone, it's for everyone. But I think it's particularly good for musicians because, you know, it, it lowers your cortisol level, your stress hormone level, hormones because we have different stress hormones, but cortisol is a big one. And um, what happens is that if you do it on a regular basis, it changes how your it changes the, all those hormonal things so you're mm -hmm. there's a uh, research that, that says that it even changes the composition of your blood because then i know you have yeah those hormones in your bloodstream right. anymore so you don't react to stress yeah. in the same way mm -hmm. and i i think it's true because yeah I've been doing it totally. two to three times a day. Okay, I, they say do it three times a day. Sometimes yeah, do it they twice. say to do it, yeah. I try not to stress about it. Mm -hmm. it's not, the point is not to stress about it. But I think it, it really helps because I've had, you know, like everyone, life is stressful. There's, We have to deal mm -hmm. with daily life. And, and I feel that I can stay calmer. And I was, yeah, so... And it's so easy to do. Yeah, some it's people, so yeah. And it's not intimidating. It's yeah. It's like, oh, I might think, no, you're just breathing yeah. out. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the flute, nothing to do with the instrument. It's just about... I'm breathing out, you know, you like that's all it, it is. You can do it I'm with your flute it. as well. Yeah, you can also I do it with your flute as well. Totally. Because some people say in the comments uh, that the ball was going up too fast, but it's exactly the... Yeah. The thing yeah, is to that's a thing. Five seconds. Five seconds, yeah. Five, five seconds. seconds, exactly. For five minutes. For five minutes. So you have what? Thirty-five breaths. Mm, Something like that. Thirty. Oh? Thirty breaths. Yeah. You have six per minute. 30. Six per minute. Yeah. Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Exactly. And it makes it brings your heart rate into a coherence because when you breathe in, your heart rate slightly increases, mm -hmm. and it's really true. I, I just yeah. tried it for myself, yeah. and it's true when I breathe. Right. It, it goes to a tiny bit faster. And when I breathe out, it goes a bit slower. And when you take someone's ha heart rate and you, let's say, uh, you put one beat, mm -hmm. one interval, mm -hmm. and you you say, okay, what would be 
this person's heart rate for a minute according to that only that beat mm -hmm. then you do it for every beat there's a big difference between one and the other right the interval is like 90 60 steady 70. yeah yeah it's, it's, like it's everywhere it's so sp it's so everywhere yeah, yeah. yeah when you do that exercise it brings you know it do it goes a bit faster and slower and then you get that coherence mm -hmm. and it brings your emotions and your heart rate in check because they're linked uh -huh. and heart there's two nerves that go from the there to there yeah emotional brain to the to the heart and yeah i have a colleague who had uh, difficulties with taking the plane and she says it helped her tremendously oh to really do that exercise because she can calm herself down mm. and she's also less stressed to begin with because she does it three times a right day. she's been doing it for years is it uh yeah so in short people should try it it's really amazing yeah. it's kind of awesome and uh mathis again wants to know is it necessary to have a fast to have fast breathing while playing the flute yes yeah yeah, yeah. you have to have like <gasps> you have to be able to suck in a lot of air very fast like <gasps> because lot, sometimes <gasps> you just have it not that type of sound time though. And go, and you yeah, have to bring in, bring in so air. much air and be able to use all that air efficiently. So yeah, yeah. Um, and if you want to breathe fast, um, uh -huh. you can think of like open open your throat. Sometimes what I do is I push my belly out, uh -huh. and then kind of comes in. Uh -huh. And also another thing is if I think of breathing in too fast, I tend to close my throat. Uh -huh. So think slow, fast. Like I I breathe in. With a type of um, accelerando, you know, I go... Accelerando, yeah, it's totally. Like a bit slow in the beginning, and then I get all the air. Mm, interesting, yeah. And it's it's more efficient than if you close your throat, and then it doesn't doesn't come out. doesn't come in as easily. Mm. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Bayou Girl 13 25 95 has a question. She is trying out for a high school level band, and in order to get in... I have to learn how to play really high notes. How do you uh, do? You have any advice for that? We have a video about high notes. We do. If you check out that video, check it out. But I don't want to just say that. But I mean, like, no, what's I another mean, way? Yeah, 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 totally. The, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Well, well, well. Sometimes people are scared of their high uh -huh. notes, and then they tense up. And yeah. It doesn't come out. Sometimes right. it's psychological. Yeah. Like if you don't know the fingerings, you have to find. You have to practice, practice them and, learn and the fingerings. yeah. What I do with my students usually is I add one note a week in their sound exercise. So okay. They go, da, na, da, na, yeah. Da, na. Let's say they stop at E. I'm uh -huh. like, okay, E, and then next week you go up to F. How would you? If you're more yeah. in a rush, yeah, you add one that's what a I mean. Day, yeah, you know? yeah, we had one a day, and then do you like group them in twos or threes or fours later on, and like practice the smoothness between the high notes, like? Well, EFG, EFGA, or, you know, like different companies. Your skills, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, practice your skills in those high registers, uh, you know, as, as high as B, right? High B. Like, the B but that you, yeah. I don't know how high she Yeah, I don't know either, yeah. So, audition, but, but if it's getting her a little anxious, then it's probably pretty normally but high. It's probably also G's. what happens is that we tighten the lips uh -huh. when what we need to do is push with the... Air, uh, air, the air, more yeah, air. More air. More air. Less up faster, here... Less up air. here, more energy And if you energy put your hand out. in front of your mouth and you blow warm air, it's it's slower. That's for the low register. Mm. If you want to play higher notes, mm -hmm. you need faster air. You go and you 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 blow cold air in your mm -hmm. hand. That's the air you're going to use for the mm -hmm. high register. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And you can practice that in your hand and then do it with your flute. Another thing you can do is, ah, uh, and then you put your hand on your belly and uh -huh. you go, uh, and you feel like you can see it on my belly, uh, that it's the muscles are going up, yeah. and it's exactly the same thing uh, that you do. Yeah, it goes out. Yeah, out. Yeah. Oh, for me. Out and in. I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh -huh. it it makes the air go faster. Uh -huh. and also, then you do that in your flute and you keep your throat open. If you can't take them, get them out, try singing in your flute, maybe. Also try harmonics. Harmonics mm -hmm. are magical for the high mm -hmm. register. Mm -hmm. I, did we make a video 
know about harmonics, like how to do harmonics or We include harmonics in a lot of videos. I think it's included in the high notes. Yeah, video. but maybe we just make a whole video just about harmonics with lots of harmonic exercises just going or through. Just explaining what explaining and also just for people to use. Yeah, totally. Um how do how do the pads hold to the keys? Are they glued to the keys? Okay, so some of them are, yes. Uh, like the trill keys have glued shellac in them. It's called shellac or some other types of material. Uh, most pads are just are tailored to fit perfectly and there's a screw that screws it on or there's a, a grommet that holds it in as well. And then there's little pieces of paper sometimes to even out the pads. Um, as Christ, as uh, Christiane asked this question, because sometimes she has pads that fall sometimes and change her sound. You should go to a technician and have them fix it. Yeah. Uh, it won't. If the pad is in good shape, it won't cost you much at all to get it fixed. So go get it fixed. Before, uh, it, before it rips, before you lose a grommet or before you lose a screw. If you lose a little screw that holds up one of those pads in the thing, that might be hard to find because if you don't have a flute that's uh, yeah. normal, it's going to be... Like a normal, it's an old, if it's an old flute, it's very, very hard to, for what they most likely have to do is make their own screws, you know, that's and what they usually do. Take that takes some time and, to make yeah. screws, exactly. Uh, is there a huge difference between a handmade flute from a standard flute? Because I saw somewhere, uh, some flutes with a head joint and silver body, but not a silver head joint. Um, yeah. It's a bit uh, sporadic, the, the rest of it, but there's some differences, I guess. Yeah, like like I said, the difference, uh, can you hear the difference video? Like, really, it comes down to actually the craftsmanship of how much effort you have to put in your hands and in your mouth technique and all that stuff to, I think, personally, because gold, silver, platinum, um, for me, I don't, I, I see that I don't see much difference, to Sci be honest. Well, some scientists say we're... There's none. There's there none. Oh, yeah. You there's know, a lot I of mean, physicists from Boulder, from a lot of places that have emailed of, us one of and my messaged teacher, us. My flute teacher, yeah. his best friend was a physicist, and we would go to the restaurant together, and he would laugh, the physicist would yeah. laugh at my teacher, like, ha, 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 oh, I yeah. can't believe totally. you have a gold flute. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. It's it jewelry. It's expensive jewelry. It doesn't change anything in yourself. Yeah. It's not and he's yeah, like, you're it's not, my teacher would say, you're not an artist. You don't understand. And he oh like, my God. I'm a scientist. scientist. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that is... Yeah, we, yeah we've gotten a lot of emails and so, messages for like that, which is totally, I think, correct in a lot of ways. A lot of things. You know, <laughs> they, they have done uh, some experiments with wine. They put oh, yeah. cheap wine in an expensive bottle. bottle. Yeah. And then people are like... Oh my uh, God! It's the best one I've ever had, and it's yeah. Depana wine. Or Depa, yeah, it's a it's convenience store wine. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Because it's we're so we're so um, influenceable, yeah. I guess you know, like so. Yeah, by 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 material, <laughs> by those types of things. Yeah. Things can com completely yeah influence, influence us, with you. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so I think that's tough yeah. To know. It's tough to know. Well, not really tough to know. It's really just that. It's science in a way. That's the thing. That, but that's, that's craftsmanship, though. Try. But that's craftsmanship. Because you know. Because if you're a good flutist, yeah, you're gonna make pretty much any okay flute sound good. Any flute that is well maintained, to the best of its ability, like if it, yes. If it closes well. Yeah. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make good. it sound fine. Yeah, totally. The other thing is, how easy will it be to play? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Guess, yeah. Some people say, "Oh, if it's uh, an if it's um allied uh, yeah, alloy, alloy, yeah, nickel nickel silver alloy." Yeah, that it's easier for someone who doesn't blow as hard to make it sound good than if it's if it's uh, mm -hmm. silver. Oh yeah. Is it true that thing? Cause someone told me that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna make sound. No. A student, it's gonna, I was like, no. I don't think no. so. I knew people in orchestras that played on Yamaha 222s. Big, like, big orchestras. People would play on crappy flutes. No one cared. It's not crappy. You know? it's not crappy, but I mean, a normal flute. It was well-maintained, yeah. but it was a normal flute that it's, didn't have any yeah. bells and whistles. Not not silver, platinum, or gold. 
we will do luke just mentioned we will we actually will be doing double blind tests yeah. soon and it's going to turn out to be pretty amazing i think personally because really i want to kind of tell people it's about craftsmanship how 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 good are the, is the mechanism built and all also, those types of what things you're used to, yeah what you're used, used to, to yeah. my flute so i guess my flute is the easiest one to play for me uh-huh even if you got me a better flute, mm-hmm. I would probably have to adjust. Yeah, yeah, the totally. Beginning, I would probably yeah. say this flute is better. Exactly. You know? so, so, yeah. But, yeah, we'll do a... I'll oh, it's going to come out soon, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do a whole, like, a uh, whole, uh, you know, 50 shades darker with flutes type of thing. <laughs> but, no, we, we really are. We're planning something very special about that. And we're going to release that hopefully soon about that, doing a double uh, double blind test no pain, on several... No pain, uh, is supposed to happen to no you. no pain whatsoever just 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 plain just flutes fun. just fun yeah uh mikhail said uh he saw a miramatsu with a silver head joint and body silver plated more expensive than a sankoi with a silver head joint and silver body oh, okay so well miramatsu is more expensive than that flute because miramatsu makes really good flutes <laughs> and and it, it's really in their craftsmanship to build uh really really sturdy flutes they're sort of like the um they're the volvo of flutes they're really the volvo of flutes for flutes it's not like if you buy jewelry it's Mm. not just about the material it's about how it was how it was made yeah and i think the tubing is the to be honest i think the tubing is the least thing the, the, the you shouldn't care about the tubing at all like tubing is re, it's almost 99 percent of it i think personally you can't screw up and it's just tubing you know it's like if you put a really good mechanism so what would be the most important thing mechanism yeah. mechanism springs pads uh the se- the actual rim of each pad has to be uh, either you know done specific ways so that it seals perfectly there's no leaks um you know like there's a lot of flute makers like guo flutes they have plastic flutes they have plastic flutes but those flutes can seal and if it's very well done you can't hear the difference no no like you tried the cheapest one but there was leaks in them that was there was a leak in that but there are some google flutes and alto flutes and bass flutes that people can't i think cannot and i think i'm hoping we get some boxes of them from them i want to do some double blind tests with that as well but you would know instantly how it feels if you did it blind because it feels like plastic and also you it's know, way lighter. It's way lighter, I yeah. Know right away yeah, you're like, oh, this is a this is a plastic flute, so it's a also, harder to it do. Was a bigger tube. Yeah. From the outside, like in my hands. It was right. Bigger, bigger, yeah. Than this flute. It would have to be like a listening test with somebody listening in the hall, yeah. and then see if they really can hear the difference. Mm-hmm. That would be an interesting test. Yeah, because hearing, you know, it's mm-hmm. like a, I was looking for a cello for mm-hmm. a kid, and uh, we were checking online and there was a like oh here's the sound of that cello and mm. my son was like yeah but that's not me playing that cello i won't sound like that <laughs> you know they take a pro and mm-hmm. they say play that look it sounds like this yeah it sounds like this if you're him or her mm-hmm. uh let's do one final question uh osa 13 uh the chat's really having a fun time talking <laughs> it's really funny uh asked uh, this is uh, how to improve air support, but um, they want to know how to do air support in the in the high you know, in the high register like the fifth and sixth octave. It's really yeah, hard. It doesn't exist. I know, but that's what the question says. I'm so assuming the it's notes. the highest notes. Like I'm assuming the highest notes. So probably above the above the staff. Above the yeah, above the G. Everything above G. Oh, I guess they count. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's oh, they that's probably what they mean, like piano register. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, well, well. It, support is always the same if you're supporting in the low register or the high register. The only thing is that if you don't support, your high register is not going to come out. Yeah, support, support, support. So I yeah. would say um, if you want to feel which muscles are involved, you can do this on. Uh-huh. And you feel it right away. And then you put your hands all around your belly and the back on the sides just to feel. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you use those same muscles when you play the flute and Mm. that support. That support. Mm. And we have a lot of videos about that. Yeah. Which muscles are involved in the. Totally. Totally. And the same trick I just gave up 
Oh, put your mm -hmm. put your hand on your belly. Burr, feel burr, burr. What's going on? And burr. then you're like, oh, support has to be in the. Oh, look mm -hmm. at the. Oh, no, no, no. You know, it's That's a different support uh, from low that to That last high. bit of energy. Yeah. 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 So you, it's faster than. Yeah. If it's lower in my belly. Exactly. But everything's working together because my mm -hmm. mouth to my. It's a whole system that works together, and at one point, mm. it, but yeah, you have to feel, you have to know which muscles are involved. It helps. You don't have to really, but I, it helps tremendously. Yeah, it helps. And then you can use them. Mm. Interesting. Consciously. Consciously. Be like, yeah. oh, I need to push with that muscle. To mm. Bring That's it how up. it feels. That's mm -hmm. how you need to remember the feeling so you can recreate it again and again. Mm. Mm. And also, don't be scared of your high notes. Just go for it. Because if mm -hmm. you tense up like this, it's a self-fulfilled prophecy. It's Absolutely. Not come out. You have to open your throat. You have to be open. Mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you go all clenched up, you know, you, totally. uh, you will not be able to get it out. So instead of don't be afraid because you cannot think of negative things. Mm -hmm. You know, if I... Don't be afraid. You're afraid, and you say don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe think. Be confident. Be, con know, yeah. be confident, and you can even put it on your stand. Yeah, you make a little post-it post note. Post-it notes. Post -it you know? notes. Yeah, be that's a good thing. Be yeah. calm. Be, yeah. You know. Do cardiac coherence. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, because you want to say the right thing to yourself to totally. get the right result. Oh my god. Because you're programming yourself. All the time, Big time. the words you're using. Mm. So if you say, "Don't be scared, don't be scared, don't be nervous, don't be nervous," mm -hmm. you don't get the same results as if you say, "Be calm, be confident." Always try to find the positive way. What you want to get, not what you don't want to get. Right. Because this way you program yourself in the right way. Mm. Like if I want my kid not to forget his homework, I say, "Bring your homework." Not yeah, don't yeah, yeah. To don't forget. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I try to do it, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, so hopefully that answered everybody's questions. Uh, I think we'll close it out for today. Um, like I said, uh, be sure to check out our other videos that we have uh, this past week. We have a couple of them. That would be great for you guys to go and watch them, share them around. That would be pretty amazing. Uh, we will be putting this up on the um on iTunes and on Google Play, we're on both of them for the uh, for the podcast version. If you want to listen in on that and follow us along during your commute or anything like that, and uh, we're actually going to re uh, resync this one. We're gonna so be sure to come back and give it a view, give it a like, um, and comment and ask questions for our next Loot Talk podcast, which will be, I believe, uh, just near Valentine's Day. Not on Valentine's Day, but it'll be close by. Um, two Saturdays from now, or two, two weeks, and we'll have a just practicing, uh, next week and stuff like that. So, I'm Nick, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks everyone for uh, joining in. See ya. Thanks. Bye.